Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to my Scrap Mechanic How to Play the Game Tutorial Guide. Basically giving you all the start tips you need to survive the first two days or so and pretty much everything you need to know. Scrap Mechanic course just added survival mode update today, 7th of May. Finally, after four years as it's been in early access, it's come and it's now officially in beta stage. So full release could be this year, maybe the very start of next year, but Scrap Mechanic is approaching 1.0. The survival mode introduces a whole host of brand new blocks. There's 400 in fact been added or total now. There's new ways to play. I'm going to take you through everything you need to know how to survive. Before we get started though, my random promo today is my Patreon. If you want to support the channel for as little as $1 and get exclusive access to early videos and special ranks in Discord, make sure you patron up. You'll also get moderator role on YouTube as well as any other live stream platforms that I use. I have lots of other tiers, but they're pretty much all the same. I don't really get content off. I give the same options for everyone, whether you donate a dollar or $20. I also have lots of servers. Now my servers are always open to everyone, but patrons and YouTube members normally get early access at least a couple of days before the servers go live for everyone else. So come and join us rat bags in Discord as well, and let's crack on with the rest of today's video. So once you wake up from the ground, well you don't actually see the intro sequence, you'll notice your ship is in a bit of trouble. You go inside and you will notice it's on fire. We're going to be putting that fire out. The ship is something that's going to be updated as we come close to 1.0 and I'm sure it's going to be part of the final story in how you escape the planet of the Haybots. But for now there are some items if you take a closer look, you'll be able to pick these up if you hold the right mouse button. In fact there's a bunch of stuff you can grab straight away. But I would avoid some of the more useless stuff like the calendar or the radio clock. What you really want to take with you is at least the locker. There are other things you can take like the small wall lights. But not necessarily that important right now. You will be back here momentarily. We're going to see if we can activate the ship. Once outside, go around all of the outsides though to find more loot boxes. Around the back here, if you're lucky, there's normally a couple. If not, just keep going all the way around the outside edges and hopefully you'll find some. Scrap Mechanic is a procedurally generated game, so no playthrough is going to be exactly the same. Although you will notice some things are always there. Obviously the crashed ship is always there. And there's usually always that ruined building and a couple of other locations that will always be pretty close to the crash landing site. For more progress, you have to follow a road which we're going to come up on soon. But let's explore the rest of the area first. If you look around closely, hopefully you'll find a little lake and you'll also find a star area which teaches you about farming. And this is pretty easy to avoid and miss, so make sure you do go looking for it as it will give you the rundown. I've got a separate video coming about farming telling you exactly how long it takes to grow each piece of fruit, what foods are the best to eat and what ones are going to refill your water. Remember this is a survival game, you are going to have to take care of it and in Scrap Mechanic it's much more important than you would think. Also note that food and water does drain quite a lot while you're exploring on foot, hence why they give you so many items and things that you can make into vehicles. But for now, it's pretty clear. You get your bags of soil, like this. You get your plant seeds. You get your bucket of water and you make sure it's filled up. If you're wondering whether or not you can drink the water, well, you can't. You have to drink soda or milk that you can get from cows. That's pretty much the only liquids that you can have unless you start cooking and making more stuff. Go ahead and plant your seed in a slot. We've got some here already, so I don't have to use up my soil. And then you can go ahead and start watering it. The ground goes dark, and then you can add some fertilizer. Now, the hay bots are here, they're designed to go after your crops. That's the whole point of the game. At night time, they can become more ferocious and you'll notice a lot more spawn. If you have quite big farm slots in a certain area, they will attack more regularly. Let's grab the fertilizer. It's in these little canisters here. You can make fertilizer with carrots. So early on, try not to actually eat your carrots up. If you can, save carrots because you're gonna need them to make fertilizer. Go ahead and fertilize it and you'll see some nice green bubbles. And if we zoom right in, you can see that's going to take three stages before it's fully grown. And then we'll definitely have something looking a little bit like this. In the meantime, keep grabbing all these resources. We're going to take this with us. And you can even take the shack that it's built on as well. Don't hit it though. As you saw, scrap pieces, base pieces are pretty easy to destroy. Instead, RB 
and take the whole lot like this. Remember you can rotate pressing the Q button what direction you want. And you can take big pieces like that too. This is a great way to get lots of resources pretty quickly and pretty early. Obviously not everything can be stacked though. Some pieces are too large and will take up one whole slot. So best just to leave them near the ship early on in the game and come back when you're ready. Unfortunately, there's no way to use this wheelbarrow. It's pretty much just a prop and for show. Unless there's something I don't know. And so you can pretty much demolish it, take all the resources and obviously get all the seeds. The wheel is probably one of the most important things. Let's take a closer look at the crops. It only takes one hit and your crops can be gone as well, hence why you've got to protect them for the haybot so much. We're going to let that one continue to grow. Let's go and see if we can put out that flame in the ship. I have got a proper guide talking about food, the resources, how much it fills up your hunger bar, how much it fills up your actual liquid and what grows the quickest. But I do want to go over the brief basics for you in this video just now. I'm a little bit more advanced in the game. As you can see, I've got three crop plots. One of these crop plots on the left has no water, no fertilizer. The middle one just has water and the third one has water and fertilizer. And we'll obviously just test and show you exactly how quick it all grows and whether or not you can grow crops without fertilizer or indeed without water. Now I've sped up the recording of this video more or less and I will be here for the pretty much duration but the one on the left doesn't grow. Pretty simple, it shouldn't grow without water. The middle one however can grow but it does take considerably longer so you don't necessarily need fertilizer. You just need to make sure your crops are watered at the very minimum and then if you've got any fertilizer well that's a bonus. I roughly planted all of these at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm going to give you the runtime how long it takes for each crop to grow. That'll all be coming in the proper farming tutorial, but today I'm just showing you what happens with tomatoes. It took roughly eight to nine minutes for this crop to grow, and I've got myself a full tomato now. Each one will give you a yield of one fruit or one veg and one seed. So replant the seed, your crop plot stays there, it doesn't run out. Anyway, for early start of the game, you maybe want to just grow six or seven plots, maybe eight, but don't grow any more than that. Apparently, if you have more than nine plots, it starts the timer, and this is what the haybots are meant to be doing. When you start mass producing and building bigger farm plots, you're going to attract the attention of the haybots, and they'll come and try and destroy your crops. You can see the little red timer has appeared because I've grown a bunch of them, so I've literally got that amount of time, it says hours, but it's actually minutes, before the haybots and all the rest of them come and attack my crops. I will cover this more in depth in my farming guide, so look out for that one, but for now, let's go back to how to start and play the game in the beginning stages. So we're back at the lake next to the crashed ship. Let's fill a bucket up with water and head back. Inside the ship, just go ahead and throw it at the middle of the floor and it should put out the majority of the flames so you can get by. You can go ahead and pick up other items and you may want to be careful that any haybots don't give you a follow. Don't worry though, they can't get in here so you're normally pretty safe. Next up, you can see you've got the master battery. Now, where do we get one of these and do we want to power it up just yet? Probably. It's a good idea to maybe dump some of the stuff that you're not going to need right yet. Some of this stuff is pretty much more or less cosmetic just at the moment unless it's powered up and that's going to take a while. Or some of it's just maybe not as useful right now either. So go ahead and dump some stuff. Make sure you always place it. This way it doesn't despawn. That's a no-no. Always make sure you place your items. Just like that. Let's go and get that battery. And by the time we've done that, we should come back to them crops being ready to grow. You should see a line of loot crates taking you up to the building ahead. But be warned, there are quite a lot of haybots in and around. Now these guys normally do about 20 to 30 damage with each hit, and usually five hits to take them down. They'll drop one of these, and this is one of the most important sources of scrap early on in the game. You're gonna to need to refine it. You can pick it up like I just did just now, but you can only carry one at a time. There's going to be a lot quicker and easier ways to refine stuff. It all just relies on automation, and I'll show you that in a while too. You should get plenty of food by looting all of these loot crates. You normally also get a bucket on these stairs. And keep going up the stairways now, all the way winding up this building. Now these guys aren't as tough, they normally only take three hits. But if you want to, make sure you do the attack by holding back on the keyboard and then hitting. It's a good way to deal with pretty much all of the robots. 
They don't drop anything to refine normally, although you might get lucky and actually find a robot head occasionally. Otherwise, it's these that you need to refine. When you've refined them, they turn themselves into scrap metal blocks. These containers have always got usually something in them, so make sure you take it. And this is what we're really looking for, the battery. Once you've got the battery, you can go back to the ship. But always take a good look around these ruins. You'll often find lots of loot crates hidden. And always make sure you go to the very top of the buildings as much as possible, as there's usually always loot crates on top too. Now from here you get a really good vantage point and you can see where you might want to go next if there's any other locations or points of interest and you can see a big one down there, we'll go and explore that in area soon. Definitely try and see if you can see any light shining in the nighttime sky, that will be another location that you can set up a base close by, it usually has a power source and it could be the mechanic shop. Now do be careful, you can take full damage, if it's very high you could even kill yourself just about survived that. Your health does replenish over time, but if it has to refuel a lot, it's gonna take your food and your water much quicker. And if your food and water are really low, then your health doesn't generate as much either. I'm pretty sure if it's at its lowest, your health won't go up more than half. Now if we head back to the broken airship, we can see we can put the battery inside it. The ship is now partially powered, although it does still need a lot of attention. What it will allow you to do is use this, the craft bot. Here is where you can find any of the other pieces you need to make your very first vehicle. Now if you've been gathering all of that loot, you should have a pretty good amount already. But maybe not enough to craft a proper vehicle, unless you're lucky to get more wheels. So go ahead and start placing some of this stuff down here, or possibly get the resources to get yourself enough wheels and build your first vehicle. And sort out your inventory a little bit using the space. Although personally I think it's better off just exploring on foot for the first day and gathering as much resources as you can before maybe making an attempt at making a vehicle. It might be better saving up to get good quality wheels as it gives a lot more stability compared to the scrap ones. And for that we need a more advanced crafting station, the craft bot, a little later on. Now you don't have to empty every single thing you have, but you definitely want to make a lot of space as you are going to be looting a couple of locations before coming back. Now as I said, night time it gets pretty dark and there's more chance of hay bots being out in force. Well, let's go and check on them crops and see if it's managed to grow quickly. And it has, our tomato is ready. We got a tomato and we got a seed back, so that means we can keep growing more. It's a good idea to fill this up if you want to make the ship your first base. But like I said, there are other locations you can use. It's getting daytime already, so let's go and explore the next point of interest. And that's why you could come back to here because you can spend all that time pretty much sorting out your inventory while it's dark and only venturing out when it's a bit more safer. You'll see lots of wreckage and stuff, but a lot of it cannot be mined. You also cannot mine rocks with your pickaxe, but I will show you some rocks you can get in a while. So here's some haybots, they're coming at me, holding back, and you should be okay, and you can avoid most hits. Just like that. They normally always drop one of these arms, so make sure you're always picking up the scrap from it. Go ahead and just start clearing the areas out. Just be careful for them haybots. Now if you're trying to get someone, it looks like it might just be a bit of a difficult jump. Obviously use your resources. You can build yourself a little platform and you can jump across. It's definitely worth the extra effort to go in some of these places as it will often have lots more loot and if you want to get your resources back you can go ahead and just start taking it just like that. All of these ruined buildings will respawn loot as well as hay bots eventually so you can just keep going back to the same places and you will get more. So that's one location already done and look how much stuff we've got out of it. Let's make the most of this daylight though and let's see if we can find some other resources to take back with us. This is going to be really important, this is actually making paint. The pigment flower can be made at a crafting station into that paint and you need that if you want to make a bed also. When you place a bed down or you use beds that you find, that will be your next respawn point no matter where or how you die. This is a special type of rock that you can mine but you can't use your sledgehammer. You're going to have to use a special drill piece that you can attach to vehicles. Cool, it's very useful, but it's not actually for eating. 
They're also useful for getting milk. Just go up to it with corn in your hand and place it on the floor. The cow will keep eating and eventually it will drop out some milk. Great way to feel your thirst. So pick up a few pieces of this at least. Now it's pretty easy to get lost. There's no waypoints or map markers in the game just yet. Unless you can something I've not been able to make later on. So try and keep a general direction of where you're going. It might help if you can see the smoke in the distance. If you see a big lot of water, you can actually go into it. And here's some of the resources that you can find and what they'll do later on. You've got quite a bit of breath underwater, so don't worry too much. This is going to give you glue, which you need for a whole host of stuff. You're going to have to hit it to open it up and you'll get glue clam. You need three of them to make one glue. This is oil. You're going to be able to make this into gasoline. If you pay really close attention to the underwater section, you'll often find a small cave. Now it's going to need a bit of breath, so make sure you've got plenty of stamina and head down into it. You'll often find a bunch of crates right at the bottom. Just not the one time I wanted to show you on the video. You can obviously build yourself a nice boat and you might even be able to build yourself a submarine if you're really, really good and knowledgeable, obviously playing this in creative mode over the years. But other than these two resources, there's not much other point in coming into the water except to look for glow bugs. Just like feeding corn to the cows, they also give you something if you feed them. But you're gonna need cardboard boxes normally. You can go ahead and pick one up and take it out with you. I'm going to show you what you can do with cardboard when you feed it to a glow bug. Just pop it in front just like you did with the cows and the corn. Eventually you will get a pickup glow. It normally takes around 15 to 20 cardboard box pieces. But with this you can make glow sticks. But you are going to need four of this glow poop. So you're definitely going to need to feed it a lot of cardboard. While you're at the water, make sure you pick up some buckets if you haven't got them already. I'm going to start heading back before it gets too dark. Now I told you you can't gather this rock with just what you've got at the moment, but you can smash a bunch of trees. Be careful though, if they fall on your head, they will start actually damaging you. And you can go ahead and start refining them just like you did with the scrap arms. It will give you scrap wood, not normal wood. And you need to hit it a good few times to get it to the point where you can actually get it to refine. Now there are some trees that you can't actually damage, usually these big massive thick ones. No matter how many times you hit them, they're not going to go down, but this one is normally good. Now before we go, I have found one more location. It does get really dark, but there are things you can get like glow sticks. That's why you need the glow bugs later on. Now when you're in one of these areas that's got more hay, make sure you go ahead and hit all the hay. Sometimes you will find a little hidden crate. Now in these massive huge trees just shining up there, you'll often find wax. They'll be in beehives that you can break down. But there are easy ways to get that wax. Find it alongside caves and cliffs. Just go ahead and hit it and then pick up all the wax that drops. Don't worry, the bees won't hurt you. You'll need a lot of wax, so always pick up as much as you can whenever you find it. Another top tip is to use the roads. If you pay attention to what way you've come on the road, you should always be able to go back to the fallen ship if you're off exploring. The world is procedurally generated, but it does always have these constants. You always have that crashed ship, then you always have the road, and it'll always lead you eventually to some big warehouses. Some of the other locations that you'll find are these great big massive cornfields. Now you'll often find some ruins and wreckage in the middle and it can be a good source of getting some little loot but these are pretty difficult places. There's normally a lot more hay bots around here and I think eventually there'll be something here that's got to take a bit of doing like a boss possibly. So avoid these areas for now unless you're really really well equipped and experienced just maybe grab whatever loot you can and get out. Now if you play multiplayer with your friends you should be able to get picked up if you get knocked out. Otherwise you will respawn at the last place that you slept. But don't worry, you'll be able to get your loot back. You can see it on the screen. Now you can have a bunch of these, but when you reload a game, they often disappear. So make sure you always get your loot before you log off. And I'm pretty sure that if you die multiple, multiple times, you will start losing your bags or they do despawn after a little while. But I've played for a good two hours before and I've still had my bag showing up. There's a burnt tree here, but you'll often come across burnt zones. Destroying these trees gets you ember, which you need to craft a bunch of stuff. So make sure you've always got a good selection of that too. 
This is also where you can find traders that you're going to end up having to rescue. But we'll come to that in another video. But for now, if you do come across a burnt zone, just get lots of that ember and take it back with you. Or use what's around your ship. Now you can duck while you're going around and it does reduce the hay bots from notes in you. So always a good idea if you're trying to get some loot back to use the crouch option. You can also sneak up on them as long as they're not directly looking at you. Now you're back on the road. At this point, you probably might want to go back and start building yourself a vehicle. Or if you really want to make yourself a new home away from the ship for now, you should be hopefully coming across something like this, the mechanic wrench symbol. You might be lucky, it might be a lot closer. It all just depends on the terrain and the generation of your map. Inside you'll find another slot where you need to put a master battery. You'll also find these sleep pods and this is somewhere where you can save your progress. But be careful, there's often hay bots inside. And if you're really lucky, you should find another battery inside one of these cocoons areas too. Just do exactly the same thing that you did at the spaceship and place it inside and power will be restored. The scrap shop is much better because it has access to all the bots that you can craft at this console. Here you'll be able to make your craft bot, your cook bot, your refinery bot, your dress bot and your resource collector. Now some of this stuff does require a hell of a lot of resources so it might be a little bit while before you can make them all but this is where you really get automation going so that when you're actually getting some of these resources like the logs or the scrap you can just simply dump it in here and it will do it all for you. Now when it comes to building vehicles, there's plenty of videos out there that will show you how they're going to be exactly the same as they are in creative as they are pretty much in survival mode, or at least the same concept. So you go ahead and try and make what you want. But in the initial stages, you're probably going to have to use scrap items that you find at the scrap workshop. These items are good for getting started, but they're not very strong. It only takes one or two hits from some of the bots and it can destroy your contraptions and vehicles. So personally, I think it's better off aiming to go for much harder resources so that you can craft something that's a bit more able to get around, functions a bit better, and is going to be protected against some of the bots. The downside of that is you will consume more food and water running around rather than just using a proper vehicle. So it's up to you. You decide. Obviously, when you're around your ship or around this scrap place and you've already slept in the bed, don't worry about dying. In fact, I wouldn't waste eating or drinking. It's better off just dying and respawning quickly and gathering your stuff so that you can save your food for your next trips. As soon as you start getting a big supply of food, of course, you can keep your levels up. But for now, it really doesn't matter if you respawn because you're really close by. I do believe the nighttime cycle lasts about 10 minutes and it normally starts getting light about 4 a.m. in the morning. This is what happens though if you do venture out at night. So you want to get in the rhythm of collecting resources during the day and then spending your nights crafting and making whatever it is you want to make. There's no way to skip the night time. That's probably going to wrap it up for this starter guide showing you how to play Scrap Mechanic. There's a lot more locations I'm going to talk to you about including settlements, how to get inside them big warehouses and also finding a trader plus what all the bots do and maybe how to build your first vehicle. So make sure you're liking it if you're enjoying the content. Make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games, news, information and guides and I'll see you ratbags for another Scrap Mechanic video very soon.